because they, it, it's a logical progression in that really you need to be able to manage email if you want to have the email manager as a record. So we'll look at the email first, and we'll look at the email manager not just as an email but as a record. So we put a significant amount of work into share so it can be used in very, very large extranets in the cloud to scale to tens of thousands of users. And we've actually got it running with tens of thousands of users. Uh, we focused on things like user, uh, group, and site administration for the extranet so you can manage easily those very, very large numbers of users. Um, then we looked at things like how do you manage and implement types and aspects within share. Uh, we've done a significant amount of work on the form system to Ajax enable it. Uh, we've also done some work around how do you look at a person's profile, how do you share it, how do you invite, and how do you get collaboration around that. The other thing for um, really showcasing our lightweight digital asset management is galleries. And again, from the whole high-end scalability perspective in the cloud, making it EC2 ready. Now, what I'd like to do now is really look at some screenshots of each of those to walk you through that new functionality. And Paul's going to be demonstrating that later as well. So the first thing really is uh, the image gallery. Now we've done lightweight digital asset management for some time and we're actually uh, presenting this to some analysts this weekend. You know, we actually do a lot in this arena and that it's pluggable so that we can do things like with images. Also people have used um, the same thing with video as well to, to transform different videos and then show them in this environment. So what we've got here is a nice way to showcase digital asset management. An example we can use here is marketing asset management where we may be uh, looking for logos for branding or little pictures of the executives that we're going to use within a marketing context. And now you can look at this in a very simple gallery um, within Share. The other area where there's been a really big uh, amount of effort and a major, major upgrade was in the form system. This is a big chunk of the work for 3.2. And... Uh, what we can see here is a new form system and uh, kind of an Ajax type system. And we're looking at the attributes here for Dublin Core. And as you can see, you can very simply see them. You can see what are mandatory fields as well. And it's just a much nicer way to manage the form system. So, you know, we've been working in the knowledge management space for many, many years. And uh, we were speaking to a, a major investment bank. And I was saying what was interesting about how do you find a site that's going to be useful for you? Now, there's one concept which is kind of like a, a directory of sites. But they said the way you really find sites that are useful is either people that you know or people that have a similar job to you or people that are recognized as experts. You want to be able to go and look at their profile and look at the sites that they regularly use. And that's the most useful way to find a site which makes you more efficient in your day-to-day -day job. So we've really created an extra section to look at people's favorite sites to really share the knowledge around what sites are useful for people by role, for example. We've also enhanced the dashboard. So now you can see things as we saw before, like favorite sites. You can also look at content that you're editing. And it's just a really simple way to look at the context of what you're doing in your day-to-day -day job. The second area where we did a lot of work was around how do we manage sites in an extranet with potentially tens or you know, up to hundreds of thousands of people. So the first thing we'll be able to have was a public site that's an extranet site where you can still control whether people can join or not join the site. So we've got moderated sites. The next thing we did as well was really looking at how you can have group access to sites. So instead of an individual joining the site, an individual can join a group, and a group can join that site as well. So it's just a way to have very large-scale management of people uh, accessing sites through share. The other thing we did was really look at some core functionality that was previously in the JSS system or the Explorer system, and not only migrate that functionality into share, but make it much easier to use and much nicer looking for you as well. So we've got group administration in share, we have user administration in share. And again, the consistent thing on each of these slides is if you're used to doing that, it's just a much nicer, more graphical way of doing these kind of things in a much, much more user-friendly way. 
The other kind of core thing is what was very important uh, early on was around types and aspects. So now you can actually apply an aspect within Share to anything within the repository. So here we can see we can apply Dublin Core, we can make it versionable, all the things you kind of know and love with Alfresco. Secondarily, you can change the type as well, and again, you can do that through Share. So we've made a significant amount of investment in Share to make it applicable, really in the extranet, for very, very large numbers of users, within groups, uh, within sites where we can decide if people can join or not within the public site, and really migrating some administration functionality from Explorer into Share. So the other thing, if you look at one of the things you know, we believe we got really right on day one, uh, looking back, was to make the whole repository as simple to use as a shared file drive. And from a technical perspective, you know, what we did was make the repository a SIS repository. Um, so the key thing about that is there was, it was a zero footprint client. What that really means is there was nothing to install on the client so that you could make the repository look like a shared file drive. So you could just literally go to, in this case, the, the, the Alfresco drives, you've got your C drive, your D drive, and the Alfresco drive, you can drag and drop any documents in, and all of a sudden you get full content services like version control, security, metadata management, but you're working from your native UI. And you can do that from Explorer in this case, or just save as in Word or PowerPoint, etc. So we've taken a very similar approach to email. And um, so the key thing here is instead of having a, the, the repository natively support SIFs, we make it natively support IMAP. So again, just like before, you can have a, a folder and a shared file drive. You can just drag an email into a folder, and then it can be managed natively in Alfresco. And we'll see later, not only we can manage it within the repository in a traditional way, if you drag it into a folder that's a records management folder, you can apply records management rules onto your email as well. So what I'd like to do is really walk through some concepts around this and some screenshots as well. So here's the new IMAP integration. So just as you're used to an Explorer, you can just open this extra folder that's suddenly a full-blown repository. You can open the repo inside of email. And you can drag and drop your emails for just simple management or for even records retention. It will work with most email clients. It obviously works with Outlook, but it works with IMAP clients with no plugins. You can also use your email as your primary uh, user interface into Alfresco, so you can browse and access content. You can get full metadata out, and it's fully template controlled. So in kind of summary, when you work with email, <coughs> some people you know, predominantly live in email, and they get full access to repository services without any client installation. Um, it's using the IMAP protocol natively. Uh, it works out of Outlook, but it also works on other email clients specifically on the mobile. So you may want to work on a mobile in your email and you can use this interface to access Alfresco. Uh, you have configuration, configurable presentation of both the content and the metadata. And again, we'll see later, this is very complementary to the mobile device. So if you're on a, an iPhone, you may want to use this or you may want to use the, um, the, uh, the iPhone interface as well. Specifically, when you want to archive email, uh, you can drag and drop to a, a folder with a file plan, and we can do records management on that email as well. Um, again, everything is based on the IMAP standards. If you're doing archiving, you get drag and drop classification, so you can uh, drag and drop to a drop zone, which can then go through a classification process. Obviously, because it's going to the native repo, you get rules-based rules filing, which is what we've already had, always had within the repo. Um, you get server-based metadata extraction to extract information about the email 